Hey everybody, this is our next lesson in the 1960s on President Kennedy and also President Johnson. Today we're going to be talking about their two programs. JFK's program is called New Freedom and Lyndon Bain Johnson's program is called The Great Society. So our learning targets today are to learn a little bit about these two programs and how they tried to improve life for the United States of America. So this is just a little preview of what we're going to be talking about. You can see here how I've set it up where we can show uh, both presidents, one on each side, and see a little bit how these areas of improvement compare. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so on the left hand side, we're going to start with JFK. So when JFK became president, he stood up at the Democratic National Convention, and I actually have a picture of him standing here making the speech at the Democratic National Convention, and he made a speech promoting his platform, the New Freedom. And so the New Freedom had basically some categories for improvement for the United States. First thing he said, he wanted to go to uncharted areas of science and space. He wanted to solve problems of peace and war. He wanted to work on problems of ignorance and prejudice and wanted our government to try to get rid of poverty and also to deal with the surpluses that basically we have, you know, people who have more than they need and we want to be sure that things are distributed more equitably, okay? And so that was his new freedom platform. So let's go through these quickly and see how uh, they were realized by our by the Congress. All right, so uncharted areas of space. So you, most of you know the speech where John F. Kennedy stands up and he says, we choose to go to the moon and, you know, do the other, the, the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. You know, in the 1960s, when John F. Kennedy was elected, uh, people in America had this feeling of hope and ch big change and that, you know, this was a brand new era of history in which we were really going to continue to make things better. You know, we'd fought the fought World War II. We'd had this great uh, generation of men and women who did did this wonderful thing. Uh, they come out of it. They rebuild the United States. They rebuild the world. The 1950s are kind of a time of um, people just at first, they're a little bit, you know, giddy uh, about what has happened. And, and then, then we get into this era of the Cold War where there are a lot of fears of the spread of communism. We go through that era of McCarthyism and uh, people being falsely accused, some people um, becoming very concerned about civil rights. And we have this spark in the civil rights movement. And so in the 60s, you have all these things kind of flowing into the 60s of, OK, now it's time to you know, continue on with this these civil rights issues and, and continue to make lives better for this great generation of people. Um, and, and the young people, that the baby boomer generation, you know, some of them are, are teenagers and, and they feel like it's their time, you know, to make a contribution. So Kennedy was kind of tapping into that feeling, all right? So um, here are some uncharted areas of science and space. So a lot of people were concerned about the environment. And so there was a lady named Rachel Carlson. She wrote a book called Silent Spring in which she talked about the dangers of pesticides on the environment. And so there was this sense of, you know, that our environment is precious and we need to try to protect it. And so you can kind of see that going back to the progressive era where people were, were very cognizant or of, uh, the, of the environment and, and trying to, to be more protective of it instead of just going out and doing whatever you want. Um, we also have a nuclear test ban treaty. Uh, that comes uh, during this time where we begin to realize, you know, we can't just go out and just blow up all these nuclear weapons everywhere and we might be, you know, damaging our, our own existence. And then finally, uh, his quest to go to the moon. It's, it's, a, it's a great goal and it will be realized in, basically in 1969 in the Nixon administration. To solve the problems of peace and war, JFK, just like every other president during the Cold War, has his own response to the war on communism. He has this flexible response. He wants to send special forces. He wants to use less of the of, uh, of, of regular military troops. 
He doesn't want to call upon them to do this. He feels like he can get it done in other ways. Um, he does attempt to um, take over or dismantle the communist government in Cuba that with an, an invasion at the Bay of Pigs. This is a failed invasion. Kennedy as, and his administration are rather embarrassed by the failure of this invasion. It wasn't planned very well. It was it was just really a, a, a just not done very well, and that's why it didn't work. And then finally, uh, the Cuban Missile Crisis will occur in a little later, in which, um, due to spy technology, we learn that the USSR has missiles in Cuba pointing at at us. And you know, for 13 days, this was probably the closest we've ever come to nuclear war, in which the Kennedy administration has talks with the USSR and Nikita Khrushchev, who is the who's in charge of the USSR at that time, and they basically make a deal that the United States will remove some missiles in Turkey and the USSR will remove the missiles in Cuba. And so, you know, as, as far as this part of his administration didn't have a lot of success here uh, as far as the war on communism. Going forward, unconquered problems of ignorance and prejudice. Um, this, as we said, you know, we have a spark in the civil rights movement. We have uh, more people getting involved with um, attempting to uh, stop the um, the prejudice, to work with work on integration, to stop discrimination. And so we have a group of people called the Freedom Riders who will challenge segregation on buses. Their whole idea is ride a bus from north to south and uh, challenge the segregation that was still going on in southern states in violation of um, the Civil Rights Act, and so uh, we'll do a little lesson on that to see how that goes. And then the big March on Washington for Freedom and Justice also occurs during this time. We have a court case called Ingley versus v Vitale. It escapes me right now what that court case is about. And so, uh, you know, because of our ability to use Google, we can sometimes go out and, and look these things up. Um, unfortunately, I'm having a little trouble with... Here we go with my computer. So Ingley versus Vitale was a case in which the court found a short school prayer authorized by a New York public school violated the first clause of the um, uh, of the uh, amendments. So Ingley versus Vitale, for some people this was a little bit upsetting, which basically was a first strike against school prayer. Uh, but some people saw it as a way to <clears throat> promote tolerance. In the, in the fact that you can't just go out and pray the way you want to pray and force everybody to go with it. Moving forward to solve the problems of poverty and surplus, uh, Kennedy was one of the first presidents, uh, only presidents, excuse me, to take on big business. He took on the steel industry who um, basically had <clears throat> raised their prices and he was a little bit upset with them and he basically called them out on it and uh, because he didn't want to see inflation. He was trying to, to keep inflation from getting out of control, keep more money in people's pockets. He also cut taxes. He created the Alliance for Progress to Fight Poverty in Latin America, and also the Peace Corps was created to uh, basically as a, a organization to fight poverty, to promote education in uh, places around the world, basically to do goodwill missions for the United States. So, you know, if you go back and you look at the things, you know, what did Kennedy do the best at? Well, this appears to be an area of strength, um, somewhat area of strength here, well, not so much here, and then a little bit here, okay, probably the going to the moon, getting that started was one of the best things that he um, promoted. All right, so tragically, John F. Kennedy will be assassinated, and his vice president, Lyndon J Baines Johnson, will take over. He will have a, pro a program called the Great Society, and the Great Society, like Kennedy's uh, New Freedom, has several components for uh, improving life. He's about education and medical care. Civil rights is a big part of his administration. Uh, he will kind of go off track by escalating the war in Vietnam, and this will probably be something that kind of dismantles or takes away from the achievements of the Great Society. So let's talk about uh, the achievements of the Johnson administration. So he created, the, his administration created the National Endowment for the Humanities to promote education in the liberal arts. 
He also uh, came up with Medicare and Medicaid, which provided health insurance for people living in poverty and also the elderly, which was kind of our first national health care system. Civil rights reforms. This is where you see the biggest achievement of the um, of the uh, Johnson administration. Uh, he uh, changed the immigration policy that had been in place since the early 1900s, which used the quota system. He got rid of that with the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965. The 24th Amendment and the Voting Rights Act uh, resulted in um, changes to uh, laws regarding voting that you can use liter literacy tests and poll taxes uh, at the poll. This was intended to make sure that African Americans had the right to vote. He created the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, the EEOC, with affirmative action to try to equalize hiring and make sure that African Americans had equal chances at jobs. There was a new Civil Rights Act passed in 1964 to prevent discrimination in public places. This is the very first Civil Rights Act uh, that will attempt to do that specifically, and it'll be the first one since the one passed in the 1800s. Gideon versus Wainwright and Miranda versus Arizona, both of these court cases have to do with rights of the accused. Um, and Gideon versus Rainwright, the, uh, you have the right to an attorney. Miranda versus Amer Arizona, you have the right to remain silent. As I said before, uh, the war on communism is where Lyndon Bain Johnson gets his biggest criticism. Um, he escalates the war in Vietnam, and um, this will kick off an a anti-war movement uh, that will continue on into the Nixon administration, which we'll, be, um, we'll talk about next. Um, so we had an incident in the Gulf of Tonkin in Vietnam in which a ship commander thought he was being fired upon by the Vietnamese. He calls this into the Pentagon. The Pentagon takes a note of it. Actually, later, the ship commander realized that he actually wasn't being fired upon, but the president didn't care about that. He actually cared about the fact that he could use this to get more government funding for the war in Vietnam. He took it to Congress. He did get that funding and with the Gulf of Tonkin resolution, and this will escalate the war dramatically. And by the height of the war, I think we have 500,000 troops in Vietnam. Um, we will have some controversies with this war. In an attempt to win the war, the escalations will result in lots of massacres and terrible terrible things going on. The My Lai Massacre is one of those examples that went in which a village was attacked and many women, children, and elderly were killed. The Tet Offensive will be the turning point in the Vietnam War in which um, the Viet Cong or the Vietnam Communists called the Viet Cong will make a push to end the war and they will attack 27 cities simultaneously. This will be the turning point for the war in which the United States will just slowly start to basically lose control. Um, as we said, there will be an anti-war movement that will begin to be sparked out of some of these events. Uh, the free speech movement is part of that anti-war movement in which people begin to speak out against the war. Students for Democratic Society is another organization that will uh, stage anti-war protests. They will also get involved in trying to find out if um, individuals are being spied upon by the FBI and the CIA. In fact, it will be found out that there is, an, there is a program called Co-Intel Pro, which will be uh, a uh, program in which people are being spied upon, and it, it spied upon people like my, Martin Luther King Jr. He had his phone tapped, um, and so it was basically collecting data on civil rights leaders and people involved in the peace movement, and this will um, create so much controversy, so much anger among the public, and it will basically uh, give more um, support to the anti-war movement. So. I hope you learned a little bit about the 1960s. Sometimes we call it the stormy 60s because of all these protests and all these civil rights uh, acts that come through, all of these failed invasions. It was a stormy time. Hope you learned a little bit about the reforms, the achievements, and also the tragedies in this era of the stormy 60s with JFK's new freedom and the Great Society, and I will see you in the next lecture.